Salam and welcome. So this is the second part of the compression factor molar volume question. If you've not watched the first one, it's already on my channel, so please try and watch that one. So this question says, a gas at 350 Kelvin and 12 atmosphere has a molar volume 12% larger than that calculated from the perfect gas law. Calculate the compression factor under these conditions and two, molar volume of the gas, which are in the sample, the dominating and the repulsive forces. So basically they want you to find the compression factor. They want you to find the value of the molar volume. And they also want you to tell them or answer the question whether it's the attractive forces that is dominating in this sample of gas or is it the repulsive forces that is dominating the sample of gas so the first thing you do like you do every other math question is for you to write out the information given we can see that the temperature we're given is 350 kelvin we can see that the pressure that we're given is 12 atmosphere right and we have a molar volume 12 percent so 12% larger, so 12% greater, right, than um, the perfect gas law. So that means the molar volume of the gas is 12% greater than that of the molar volume of the ideal gas. So we're asked to find Z, which is a compression factor, and we're asked to find Vm, the molar volume of the real gas. So that is it. <clears throat> well, since we told, they told us that we were about the perfect gas law, the first thing we have to do is to find the molar volume using the perfect gas law, which is PV equals NRT. Well, we're not finding for the volume here. We're not, sorry, we're not trying to solve for the volume here. We're just solving for the molar volume, which is the same thing as saying the molar volume of something, same thing as volume divided by number of moles. So we're not gonna divide this information by number of moles and we can cancel our number of moles on the right side and we can just have um, the V divided by N as having this new equation right here. So that's PVM equals RT. So the molar volume times the pressure equals RT. So this is how you basically get what you need in this question. So continue, continuing it, since we have the temperature, we have the pressure, and we have the gas constant, we can rewrite this equation to what we're actually supposed to solve for, which is the molar volume. So that would be Vm equals RT divided by P. That is how you get this. And yeah, that's how you get this. So let me erase all of this information here. And just rewrite this. Vm is the same thing as RT over P. So yeah, let's substitute. We know the gas constant to be 0 0.08206. The units to be dm cubed, atm divided by mole Kelvin times the temperature. We substitute that as 250, 350 Kelvin. And then we have the pressure to be 12 atmospheres. So we cancel out the atmospheres and we cancel out the Kelvins and we end up with molar volume equals 0 0.08206 times 350 divided by 12. This is equivalent to, when you put this in the calculation, you actually get 2.3934 dm cubed per mole, right? And pay attention to the units. We already said molar volume is the same thing as volume divided by number of moles. So the units of molar volume is actually the unit of volume divided by the unit of mole. So dm cubed per mole is actually what you get. Now, we've gotten this information right here. Now we're asked to solve for the, um, what do you call it? We're going to solve for the molar volume of um, the real gas. And they say that is one, that is 12% greater. So this is the one for the ideal that we just solved here. Then the one for the real gas is what we're about to solve. So note this. When you're dealing with percentages and you're here, something is, a so, so, so percent greater than something else is the same thing as saying now that if you have a hundred of something, right, or a hundred percent of something, right, this new information is greater by 12 more percent. So that would be 100 plus 12 percent. So that's actually going to be 112 percent. But since we're dealing with um, percentages, we can, we have to remember that say something like 5% is the same thing as five over 100. If you say something is 20%, same thing as 20 over 100. So when we get the decimal of this value, 
112% is the same thing as 1.12. So going back to the question, we're told that the molar volume of the real gas is 12% larger. So that's just going to be 1.12 times whatever we got the molar volume of the, um, of the ideal gas to be is what is going to now give us the molar volume of the real gas. If that makes any sense, right? So that would be the molar volume of the real gas is going to be 1.12 times what we've solved, which is 2.3934 dm cubed per mole. We input that in your calculator. What you end up with is the molar volume of the real gas is going to be 2.6806 um, dm cubed per mole. When we do this in two, three significant figures, we end up with the molar volume of the real gas is approximately 2.68 dm cubed per mole. So that is the answer to this question, 2.68 dm cubed per mole. This is absolutely beautiful. Now, we are also told now that we found the molar volume of the real gas, or the gas we're solving for, we're told to find the compression factor. I wanted you guys to know this, that compression factor is very, very important as you're learning your, um, when you're learning the real gases. You have to note that you're dealing, you would need to use a formula and the compression factor formula are many, but in this particular question, the compression factor formula we're going to have is Z equals, okay, the molar volume of the real gas. Are you hearing? You listening? Divided by the molar volume of the ideal or the perfect gas. So you can call it perfect gas, you can call it ideal gas. That is just basically it. So now we have the information for the real gas which is 2.6806 dm cubed per mole. And again, the notes that the Z value, the compression factor has no units. It's just a number. So now divided by the molar volume of the ideal gas, we solve this. We saw that that's 2.3934 dm cubed per mole. Cancel out the units. So, 2.6806 divided by 2.3934, we end up we having the real um, the compression factor to be 1.1199. So when you do the three sig figs of this, you're going to see the compression factor is actually 1.12. So that is the answer for this question. Compression factor here is 1.12. Now. We have to remember that the question also asks us a third one, which are in the sample. Is it the attractive forces or the repulsive forces that are dominating in the sample? Well, another thing you need to know about compression factor is this is just the general law. Whenever the compression factor is equal to one, what you're dealing with is an ideal gas, basically or approaches one, one, whatever you want to call it. Whenever the compression factor is greater than one, what you're, you have to know is that the repulsive forces dominate. So you're going to have attractive and repulsive forces anytime you're dealing with a real gas. An ideal gas is just Z equals one, right? There's not attractive force, there's no repulsive force. It's just basically it's like balance, if that makes any sense. Because, I mean, it's an ideal gas. It's just the, the, the ideal gas explanation is just for us to have an understanding of... Um, um, thermodynamics. In the case of a real gas, understand that when Z is greater than one, the repulsive forces dominate in the sample. Okay. When Z is less than one, know that the attractive forces dominate. So in this particular case, we have 1.12, hence it is greater than one. So the answer here is that the repulsive forces dominate so hopefully this has like helped you guys so yeah if you have any questions please um, um comment it in the comment section or sorry write in the comment section i am an online tutor for students and i help students succeed and excel in all of their stem related courses so if you need any help make sure you email me at shuhabi tutoring at gmail.com I am an excellent tutor and mentor for middle school high school and college level students and hopefully 
you guys will be emailing me and you guys will be succeeding in your class because all my students get ease. I wish you guys all the very best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.